Let's look into finding the p-value in chi-square tests for count data. Here we're going to find the p-value using a chi-square table and using the statistical software R. Here's our chi-square test statistic, where for each cell we take our observed count in that cell, what we saw in the sample in other words, we subtract the expected count, what we'd expect to see on average if the null hypothesis were true, square it, divide it by the expected count, and add that up over all cells. Let's think about this test statistic a little bit. If the observed counts in the sample are close to what we would expect to get if the null hypothesis were true, then the test statistic will be small. And if these observed counts are very different from the expected counts under the null hypothesis, then the test statistic will be large. And so for given degrees of freedom, the greater the value of the test statistic, the greater the evidence against the null hypothesis. And so the p-value is going to be the probability under the null hypothesis of getting the observed value of the test statistic or something even larger. Or in other words, the area to the right of the observed test statistic. Let's look at a quick example here. If the value of the test statistic is 7.1 with 3 degrees of freedom, what is the p-value? Well, first of all, we're going to draw out a chi-square distribution with 3 degrees of freedom. So this is a chi-square distribution with 3 degrees of freedom. The value of our test statistic is 7.1. And the p-value is simply the area to the right of that test statistic. That is the p-value. And we can either get the exact value using software, or we can get the range of values using a table. So let's go to a table first. Here's my chi-square table. Now the chi-square distribution is not symmetric. It is in fact skewed to the right. And so typically chi-square tables are made up of two pages. One page that gives chi-square values in the left tail of the distribution, and the other page which gives chi-square values in the right tail of the distribution. Values in the left tail are important for some types of tests, but not so much for chi-square tests for count data, so let's scroll down to the other page. Here's the page that gives chi-square values in the right tail of the distribution, which is typically of more interest for these types of tests. And so we go over here to 3 degrees of freedom, because we had 3 degrees of freedom for our particular problem. Now I'm going to make that a little bit bigger so it's easier to work with. What we want is the area to the right of 7.1. That's what we're looking for here, this area. And if we go up here to 3 degrees of freedom, we would see that 7.1 falls in between these two values. That's important to us because what the table is telling us is that the area to the right of 6.251, this area here is given in this subscript. So the area out to the right is 0 0.10. Now the area to the right of 7.815, this area here is given in the table as 0 0.05. Now that's important for us because 7.1 falls in between these two values, which implies that the area that we need falls in between these two values. So this area must be less than 0 0.10, but greater than 0 0.05. And so using our table, we found that the p-value, the area to the right of our test statistic, is less than 0 0.10, but greater than 0 0.05. If we wanted to get more precise than that, we'd have to use statistical software. So let's use R to find that value. Here's the statistical computing package R. And here the command p chi -squ gives me the area to the left of the value I put in. So if I put in p chi 7.1 with 3 degrees of freedom, then we get the value 0 0.931222. But we don't want the area to the left, we want the area to the right. Well, that's a simple adjustment. It's simply going to be 1 minus that. So if I put in 1 minus that command, I get the p-value that we need, 0 0.069 to three decimal places. And so using software, we can find that the p-value is equal to 0 0.069 to three decimal places in this case. 
And of course, the value we get using software falls in this range of values we find from the table. And it's typically best to rely on software when we can to find an exact value, rather than use a table to come up with a range of values.